Good morning on this bright and sunny decaf Thursday after a literal horrible night of weather across the southeast last night. Um, Mark and I were both in Chattanooga. I drove to Anniston in the worst wind that I have ever encountered in my life. Um, so thoughts and prayers to everybody who is affected by that because it, I mean, I was looking at the Weather Channel website this morning and it looked terrible. Uh, yeah, we had a board member who lost electricity and one of his, you know, something fell down, an electric wire fell down. Like a live wire in his front yard that he said he walked over to thinking he could just move it before he heard it buzzing. Like what a scary situation. So I know the power crews are working overtime today to try to get things back up and running um, in a lot of the Southeast. I mean, when you see a line of red that is just straight up crossing four states, it's not what you want to see on the radar. Yeah. And outside of, I mean, of course it's dangerous and one thing, but I, I, as a kid, you're always like, oh, it's so cool. And the power goes out. You can do candles and play games. As an adult, it is not cool. It's After cool. about four hours, like I can't shower. Everything in the fridge is gone. Like when you have no cares in the world, it's awesome. But when you're not, it's like, oh gosh, like, I can't do anything I need to do. I can't do the wash. Like it's, it's crazy how much we need electricity. I know it's, it's kind of wild. And I was driving from Chattanooga. We'll touch on while we were in Chattanooga here in just a second, but I was driving from Chattanooga to Anniston. I almost stopped halfway at a family house that we have in Fort Payne. But then I was thinking about if the power goes out, I would be doomed in Fort Payne because it is truly like my grandparents' house that they built in the 50s. So we don't even have internet to... there to begin with. So it probably won't matter that much. I know. <laughs> I know it would be a, a bad situation. But we were in Chattanooga last night for a really exciting reason. Um, if you heard on the Tennessee Star this week, Mark did an interview with them. And they covered this cool thing that we're starting to do called a listening tour. And it, it truly is what it says it is. We are going around the state, gathering groups of people together that have similar interests or similar backgrounds and doing kind of a focus group style thing, talking about the issues that folks are dealing with. And we want to really know what people are dealing with so that we know what needs to be attacked from our side. Um, Mark, what were some of the most interesting things? I have a few thoughts and I'm wondering if yours line up with mine. Some of those interesting things that we got from people. Well, let me talk about this first, why we're doing this, right? I mean, yeah. it, when we say listening tour, it's like you said, we, we really mean it. I, I hate to be, you know, the bearer of bad news, but when politicians go on listening tours, they aren't listening to you. They're just trying to tell you what they want you to hear. Um, this is a true listening tour. We want to make sure that what we work on in the legislature next year and for years to come and what we kind of focus speaking on are concerns of normal people. Now, hearing, you know, what business owners, what, you know, just people from different areas of the state, you know, we're trying to, to get Democrats, Republicans, older people, younger people, different racial demographics. So we really want to get a good feel for the state and, and kind of what consistent problems are having. And the point of that is that we're going to obviously we're not going to do something we don't believe in. But when we hear these consistent problems, like how can we as a statewide think tank try to help ease this problem, how to fix it through, you know, the free market policies that we believe in. So we're really thinking outside the box. So I'm very, very excited about this. And we've had two so far. Um, so we had one focus group. Um, we worked with the great Randy Ellison. We had one focus group where we kind of just talked to middle Tennessee people. And we saw, heard a lot of their problems, which, you know, range from traffic to to kind of feeling dangerous driving on the roads because of how bad they are. Yes. Um, but we did a small business one in Chattanooga last night where we had, I think, 11 small business owners talk about their issues. And it was just, um, it was pretty stunning. And I guess not surprising that basically all of them had the same top two on their list. And it's hard when you get any 11 people to all have the same top two issue. It really shows you how important it is. And we, we heard, you know, it's really hard to find help, good help or help generally yes. to work in these places. And just the, the idea of what the supply chain and what inflation is doing to their businesses. We're, we're just, I mean, it was just, it was crazy to me to hear the exact same thing from so many different people, yes. just because, I mean, you can't get me and you to talk about, like, we would probably have a way different top three. So to hear 11 different people from all backgrounds, you know, probably all political parties have the same issue was just very interesting to me. What, what about you? Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Yesterday, there was an article in the Chattanooga Times Free Press that said that Tennessee has the second lowest tax burden of all the states. And then people still yet brought up that their property taxes are high and the infrastructure in the cities is not matching the property tax that people are paying as far as roads and travel. And so I thought that that was a really interesting correlation. And one thing to note about these focus groups is we don't push anyone. In. We give them a blank sheet of paper and ask for their top three issues. We don't push yep. them in any direction. And the fact that they all said that the roads were hard and that the taxes 
that they're paying, the property tax burden does not match the the roads and the results that they're getting from the, their local infrastructure. I thought was very interesting. Yeah, and it was it was a uh, most people we talked to too. They said, you know what, I'm okay with the tax I pay. Um, like I don't I don't right. necessarily need lower taxes, but I, I do want you know a better return on, on those taxes exactly. when it comes to roads and and schools. So it was just it was very interesting. And and like Taylor said, I mean, when we say that we're of course we have issues that we work on and we care about, but our whole point is is to be super open minded so that we can hear what the real issues are and then be creative as a team to say, okay, well here's the issues that you know 90 percent of the people have that impacts our everyday life. What can we do on the state level to try to you know I, I think that it's unrealistic to say try to get rid of these problems because most of the time you can't get rid of it but try to lessen or make it not as much of a problem for these people. So it was, it was very exciting to do that. And uh, we look forward to continuing to do them. We're going to be in Memphis at some point. Uh, we're not telling anybody because these are all people that, you know, these are not supporters of ours or people that, you know, we set up, we, we're getting kind of random people or people that other people know, like none of these are beacon supporters. So we're trying to get it from, you know, not just the oh, libertarian conservative perspective. We want it from everyone in the state. Everyone. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm it was, really excited. It's it cool to do, and we're excited to kind of keep you updated as this project goes on, and then we'll have a great presentation in August kind of talking about what we're going to actually end up working on based on this feedback. Absolutely. It's been really fun to get to know people. Me as the outreach person, I kind of thrive in a situation like that, just listening and figuring out how I can connect people with others that can help them and hear them out, as well as uh, influencing our policy decisions. Um, speaking of being in Chattanooga, there is a, there's been so much chatter over the last year, more than a year, maybe. I don't remember when we started talking about this, but the new Lookout Stadium. Oh, four years. Yeah, 2017 is kind yeah. of when the chatter started. Definitely <laughs> the last year, though, it has, it has increased. And then this week, we found out that the Titans will be getting a new stadium at a hefty cost to the tax. Well, not will be, could be. <laughs> could be, but yeah. I mean, it's being yeah. talked about in serious conversations. Yeah, yeah. The, the governor basically asked the legislature, he wants $500 million in bonds um, to go to the Titan Stadium. And then that's going to be on top of, you know, the city of Nashville is also going to be giving tax breaks, potential money for this new Titan Stadium, which I think is, I think, $2.1 $2 billion what they want it to cost. I've never in my life, first of all, I've been in that stadium all of one time, and it was to go to a soccer game that I got a ticket for. Ew, free. that's even grosser. You always so, went for, for a soccer game? It was for free. Yeah, I so I went. Um, but I will say that I love sports. Everyone knows. Okay, let's just say this. Everyone knows that Mark and I love sports. We love watching it on TV. We love even more watching it in person. We are not hating on the Titans. We, If the Titans want a new stadium, build the stadium. Pay for it yourself, though. Study after study after study has shown that the, that the investment on a stadium by taxpayers is not returned to the level that is promised. It just, it just never is. And so whether it's the Lookouts or the Titans, a team that is not talked about very often or a team that is talked about all the time, the return on investment is not going to be high. And it's just really disheartening that we keep on doing this over and over and over and seeing the exact same results. It's the definition of insanity. Yeah, I think your point is a good one because we have, you know, issues generally with kind of what we consider corporate welfare. So any tax dollars going to specific businesses over other businesses, kind yeah. of picking winners and losers. With that being said, there is some corporate welfare deals that, you know, have been a positive. It doesn't mean that they should have given them out. And if it's only, you know, 5%, it's still bad overall. Sure. But I don't think there's been one stadium that has ever worked out. We have a, a principled objection to it. But anybody who understands math should have a, a you know, a, a mathematic it objection. It, 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 out. it doesn't work. And every study done from liberal groups like Brookings to conservative groups like Cato to even government agencies have said that these do not work. And they use this thing called a substitution effect, where a lot of times the numbers that they present to people saying, oh, it's going to create this much in revenue or whatever. Those are numbers of people already going out to eat. They're just moving that money around. So they're not getting new money. It's just moving the money from this restaurant to this restaurant or from the movie theater to the baseball game. The fact is the lookouts have under 50%, you know, attendance. They do not need a new stadium. They don't even make money now. The Titans make a lot of money i think we saw this 300 300 million dollars or so meaning they can pay for a new stadium mm -hmm. um of course you know it's i understand it, it as a business person it's hard to be like well if i can get money from the city or state why should i not try to do that but i feel like we need to be better than that and, and again we talked about this when we sent our statement the super bowl champion los angeles rams zero dollars up front to help with the construction of their stadium they pay for it all themselves there is a structure for doing that they make a ton of money and i, I know that the titans said you know well 
maybe we want to, they're actually not the ones who asked for new stadium. It's the city council and, and Mayor Cooper who said that, but the repairs are going to be so bad because it was built poorly in the first place with taxpayer money that you wonder how will it be any better this time? It's just a, um, I, I don't care about, you know, even if you're not completely with us on, you know, what, what tax dollars should go to and if they should, you know, pick winners and losers for big companies that come here, you have to be against this just on the math. Every wow. single study ever done shows that's not done by the actual stadium um, has shown that this is a bad deal for taxpayers. We want the new stadium. Great. The, the current stadium's fine, I think, but we want the new stadium. They just have to pay for it. I think it's a pretty fair thing. Heard that. Totally agree. We can leave it at that and talk about something a little also sports related that Mark and I have been really absorbed in for the last few weeks um, that's not taking any of our tax dollars, but is taking our other money. And that is March Madness and the Final Four. Um, Mark, the betting king extraordinaire, has fared pretty well this year. I've done okay. Yeah, yeah. I would have I would have won um, almost five grand if Miami would have beaten Kansas because that was my big – they were underdog at the first one. That was my big upset to go to the Final Four. But unfortunately, well, a little bit short. They were by six at halftime and lost by 26. So that was well, impressive. My bracket could literally not be more of a disaster. I do still have Villanova, which yeah, me too. that's good. But I mean, my bracket, it's just a complete disaster. I went from first place to fifth place so quickly in the span of but two so, days. But so is, I mean, I will say that everyone's is because, you know, you have these traditional powerhouses in the final four, but nobody's picking North Carolina. They were an eight seed. They had nine, they, they had, I think, six losses by 20 points or more in the regular season. Yeah, so I mean, like they had some issues, and you know, I, I knew Marquette was bad. So I'm like, UNC will beat Marquette, and I think they have a shot against uh, the number one in that bracket. But for them to make the Final Four is incredible. Nobody's picked that, and it's weird because you hear North Carolina in the Final Four, you're like, yeah, that makes sense, but not this year. Not this year. And as much as I mean, not many people were picking Duke. I know they were two seed, but that was a tough bracket. You know, you, you have a lot of good teams in that side of the bracket, and nobody really thought. I mean, you have Texas Tech, who was tough. Um, you figured that Gonzaga would be who they played, but they kind of avoided all of that and kind of got, I don't say got lucky because I mean, they, but Texas Tech got on the roast, but that is not, this is not the Duke team you expect. Villanova is their least talented team in years. People are like the talent's just not there. It's got one of their best players hurt. So they're gonna have a tough time in the final four. Um, And then Kansas is, I mean, they were about the only team I think a lot of people thought would be there. Mm -hmm. But they have a coach that seems to choke every year in the the playoffs. I mean, I I didn't think they were going to get there. Wild. Absolutely wild. Also, um, I have a, I know somebody who bought his ticket to see Duke in the final four, like as the game was winding down and he knew it would be Duke, he bought his ticket. And then after North Carolina won and was slated to go, the ticket prices doubled. Oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be, I think this might be the most expensive final four game ever. Cause it's like, you have all the elements of this greatest rivalry in sports. I don't think they've ever played in the final four. I don't know. Um, and you have co- potentially coach K's last game. The last home game that he ever had was when North Carolina shocked Duke at Duke. So it's just a, I mean, it's for basketball fans. And you know, as somebody who loves upsets, this is kind of a perfect tournament. You had St. Peter's, you had Miami, you had a lot of these great upsets, but you still have a final four of very talented teams. Like none of the, all of those four teams deserve to be there. Okay. Tell me what, what's your prediction? I'm going way outside the line. Okay. Uh, Villanova over North Carolina in the finals. I'm taking the two underdogs in those games. I think Villanova cuts down the nets again, despite losing their best player or one of their best players, despite being a five point underdog. I believe Jay Wright is the best coach there. And I think he will figure out a way to win. Okay, I don't think you're wrong, but I will be cheering for Duke because it's Coach K's last season. It's just my tender heart. Like, I just can't not I mean, do it. <laughs> they are very, I mean, you're, they're number one for, I mean, they they are, so right now it's Kansas is a slight favorite and then Duke's right under them and then kind of Carolina and, but it feels like Duke has not put together full games all year. And no, the I last agree. time they played, they got shellacked against, at home against North Carolina. So I agree. I don't like that matchup for them. That's kind of more of my issue. I fully agree with you. I just, it literally is totally a sentimental thing for me is Coach K's last season would love to see it, would love to see them go out on top. It, it certainly could happen. And I will say out of the teams in this, the team that's looked the absolute best is Kansas. They have, yes. they have kind of run through their opponents. They've not even really had any scares. So, I mean, that's one of those. And I know they haven't played great teams, but it's like a team that hasn't been tested really yet. I mean, yeah. like I said, they were down by six, but they answered by winning by 26. So it's a, 
it, it'll be interesting to see. It'll be fun to watch. And the NCA could not have made more money off this. They got all the upsets they love, but then they still have four blue blood schools in the final four. So it's kind of the perfect thing for the NCA. Yes, I. Oof, this which is, is the this most corrupt organization fun. in the world. It's oh. gonna be yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's gonna be fun to watch. Um, before we go, let's talk about the slap heard around the world. Truly heard around the world because. US TV bleeped out everything that Will Smith said. So not me online looking for well, you Australia the Japanese, and Japanese feed that they actually had it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently Japan doesn't care. That's awesome. Yeah. Japan doesn't give a single crap about what's going on and they will not bleep out anything. What I mean, okay, here's the thing. I think I have a different opinion than almost everybody on this. Probably but- so. I don't like Jada Pinkett Smith. I think she is very problematic. And the fact that Will- why, was, Let me ask you this. Why is she problematic? I, I just want to know why you think that. She, by all accounts, cheated on her husband with her son's friend who they took into their home when he was going through a rough time. I will say that is true, but it seems like if you read more stuff that they have an open relationship, which again, I'm not for, but like the, if she's allowed to do that, I don't hold her. And I think that she got caught, but like Will has said that he has done the same thing. So I know I think it's weird to have an open With relationship. Her son, but that does, friend. I mean, but he, I mean, Lee, I, 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 it's not great. I'm not saying it's great, but they had this agreement, which I don't like, but that's, you know, they're consenting adults. They can do what they want. I don't think that makes her a bad person. No. Okay. But or I problematic. Just think it's problematic. But I think, I think that kind of relationship is problematic in my mind, but whatever. Yes, all around, just <laughs> yeah. problematic. I think their whole situation is problematic. I think that. Chris Rock was either given a bad joke. I've read accounts on celebrity blind items that the writers saw her look on the red carpet and threw that joke on the teleprompter last minute. And him saying, I love you, Jada, but was not in there. And he saw the joke coming and he kind of tried to qualify it. Will Smith laughed. Then he saw that his wife was ticked. Then he went up and hit him. I just think that Will Smith needs to cool his jets I think when the Academy asked him to leave, he should have left. And now they're going to have to take more serious. They're going to have to take more serious actions because he didn't leave when he was asked to leave. And it has caused a really bad stain on the Academy Awards. That's all I'm thinking. So I had a couple, I have a couple of feelings. First of all, I do think we need to get past this idea that words are not violence. It's kind of a left. So words are not violence. (laughs) So Will Smith had no right to do anything, you know, no matter what he said, even if he knew, and it wasn't even a good joke. It wasn't funny. Even and, and I mean, honestly, he's a he's a comic. Like that's part of what they do. You don't have to like it. Um, and I obviously you want to defend your wife and you could say something to him afterwards, but like there's no place to hit somebody for that. With that being said, even on our weekly call, he slapped him. This was not a big deal. Let's like I know maybe legally it's assault. It, it, he didn't go punch in the face and beat the crap out of him. He slapped him. And it, it was kind of a hard slap. Of it. No, no, principally, but everyone's acting like he attacked him. Murdered him. It was a slap. Like yeah, the fact that Chris Rock could continue so easily shows how little that was. It, it didn't affect, I mean, it hurt probably for a second. It's like when you're a six-year-old and like, I just, I think people are, I, I, of course, maybe legally it might be assault. I, I don't, I'm not going to get into the legal distinction about this, but as a person, you know, who like, sees actual fights who saw actually like that's nothing he didn't attack him he didn't do any i mean he, he attacked him but like the most minimal war it's the same thing like stealing something yeah you could steal a candy bar and you could steal you know a 20 you could steal a two hundred thousand dollar house those are still both stealing but there's way different levels of what they are and this is kind of the 99 cent candy bar but it was unnecessary it across was. the board it was uncalled for yeah, I mean, I guess, I, I guess my whole thing is I don't think Chris Rock did anything wrong. I mean, he, he made a joke that wasn't good. He's allowed, I mean, it wasn't a good joke, but there, I mean, I make a lot of jokes that aren't good either. It doesn't mean I should be slapped for it. And right. it, whether it's intentionally insulting or not, it doesn't really matter. You can't hit somebody. But with yeah. that being said, I feel like you're seeing some people like, oh my gosh, he viciously attacked him. It's like, he slapped the man. Calm down. He did not punch him and take him to the ground and like, be, like he didn't try to kill him. He slapped him. If I, if I got to slap Mark every time he made a joke at my expense, I mean, my hand would be, I would be, and I would be so strong by now from you my would. right hook. I would be so strong. And I would That's, say, please stop doing that. But I don't feel like you're trying to kill me. So it's yeah. not. And I mean, honestly, Chris Rock has taken this well. I mean, he, he's not he's pressed charges. So well. I mean, the, and like, he's been like, yeah, I mean, it was a joke. I, I actually really respect what he's done with this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't, I also don't think Will Smith is like a, 
I think what he did was super inappropriate. Like, I don't think he's a villain though. He slaps him. I mean, it's like, I don't hate him forever because of that. And I, I just do don't think, think the Academy could have handled him look it better. A child. Well, I think the Academy could have handled it better. They could have. They could handle everything better. Here's why do we even have these awards anymore? Nobody <laughs> watches this. This is the only time this has even gotten pressed in the last 15 years, except for when Ricky Gervais insulted people. Like this is so, this is over. Why do we do these stupid award shows? And I saw that Amy Schumer said something like she wanted to have Zelensky introduce an award. I think he's dealing with bigger things right now, Amy. Nobody, nobody cares about you as much as you care about you. <laughs> like it's so true. I literally only watch to make fun of. I hate watch these shows. You don't have to watch them at all. You don't have to get them. I mean, you no. are the one person in the ratings that watches them, I guess. But like, no, it's stupid. I do enjoy hate watching them so I can make fun <laughs> of them later. Well, but I mean, it, I mean, honestly, it's great for them. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but there's more than a 0% chance that it was staged too. I know. I do. It, it's I, not likely, but like, I want to say Will Smith and Chris Rock both haven't really been that relevant in the last 10 years. Now we're talking about both of them. The Oscars haven't been relevant in like 30 years. So there's all these things that are being talked about that never would have been otherwise. And again, I'm not saying, I'm not going to say that it was staged. It probably wasn't, but there's more than a 0% chance it was staged. Literally Chris Rock has not been, I mean, I don't, he's not been famous in 20 years. He's famous. Oh, no, no. I mean, he's funny, but he was like the man in the 90s. Everyone like the best stand-up comic. And he's kind of just in like kind of garbage Adam Sandler movies now. Um, and Will Smith, again, like I know he's done some movies that people like, but he hasn't been super relevant since like the early 2000s when like Will Lennon came out. That's true. Well, I love Chris Rock. I think that Will Smith needs to cool his jets. I think that Jada needs to give up her television show and quit airing her family's dirty laundry on in front of everybody and then people wouldn't make maybe people wouldn't make fun of her that's all i'm saying and i think the academy should take some action toward will smith because they asked him to leave and he refused and it was an unprecedented type of event i feel like so instead saying. of defunding the police why don't we just defund the academy like don't, don't let them have any money like that they, they should get rid of the academy how awesome would that be let's get bumper stickers t-shirt <laughs> a <laughs> sky rider like let's do it all defund the academy <laughs> And, and the Screen Actors Guild will we'll, we'll defund them too. Anything to do with, you know, Hollywood and unions, I'm, I'm good with the funding. <laughs> Mark, this is the best idea you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, we'll see you next week.